Curtis just dropped a brand new video. Let's travel to the most extreme place in the universe. I'm always at Sideway. Curtis makes a little space video. So uh, yeah, let's jump straight into this one, man. The universe is pretty big and very strange. Hundreds of billions of galaxies with sextillions of stars and planets. And in the middle of it all, there's Earth with you. And many, many, many aliens. But, you know, <sighs> we haven't found them just yet. And us. But as enormous as the universe seems looking up, it seems to get even larger when you start looking down. You are towering over worlds within worlds within worlds. True. Each in True. sight and yet hidden from your experience. Let's go on a journey. We'll start in a park about a thousand meters long, enough for a 15 minute walk. Every uh -huh. time we click this magic button, we'll become a thousand times smaller. I'm not doing Please a 15 minute walk though, I can't be asked that. Suit so you don't die and can still see. You know, Ready? that's looking like Iron Man. Let's go. Wait, where are we going? Are we not going to space? Where are we going? Cuz, where are you taking us, man? Realm. The vibe? You are the size of a grain of sand, just two millimeters high. Oh, on. it's not Iron Man suit, it's Ant Man suit. Okay. Made of grass that seems as tall as an eight story building to you. A square meter of lawn is now a dense metropolitan area right. with 100,000 blades or two Manhattans worth of grass towers. From your new tiny perspective, the park that you could quickly stroll through before is now the size of France. Crossing it would take at least a week. Human-sized humans loom over you, four times taller than the Empire State Building, their steps falling from horizon to horizon. Bro, that's mad when you think about it, isn't it? Like, if you actually was an ant, what we are to, like, ants? Oh, my God. The, the size of a helicopter lands near you, making the ground shake as its hairy carapace vibrates with each wing beat. You try to escape, but are barely able to move because the air is so gooey. Before you click the button, air resistance was barely noticeable. But as you're now a thousand times smaller, it's as if the air has become a thousand times denser. Right. It feels like you're moving through honey. Flying insects like bees use this to their advantage. Their wings are not made for gliding, but like paddles that row through the air. Scaled up to human so size, weird, the man. bee would outrun a Concorde jet, except it couldn't even take off because it would be too heavy for its wings. The Microscopic Realm. You've entered the microscopic realm and are now less than two micrometers tall, about the size of an E. coli bacteria. From your new tiny perspective, the park you started in is now a million kilometers wide to you. If you walked non-stop, it would take some 25 years to cross it. It's hard to grasp just- Bro, I know this is going to some mad about the universe, like this scale. Like, so now you bring us back to human size and the scale of just like the universe to us is just- yeah. how huge the microscopic yeah, yeah, world yeah. is to its tiny inhabitants. The giant bee that was close a moment ago is now the size of Mount Everest, towering high into the sky, but alive, humming, and vibrating. The air here feels almost solid to you. On the human scale, it would be as viscous as lava, extremely hard to push through. What the fuck? The blade of grass now expands so far you can't see its edges, stretching as wide as Paris would to a regular-sized human. That's you so see weird. that look like dried up riverbeds, dead patches like deserts, and giant craters left behind by voracious aphids. But if you look closely, this is not terrain. These are rows of individual cells, each the size of a house with hard exteriors like glass shells. Every few cells, there are huge openings called stomata, like mouths sucking in air and blowing out oxygen. Suddenly, the gigantic bee begins to move. A construct made of rigid what pieces with this that bee, man? against each other, like a suit of armor. It takes off to escape a drop of water the size of an asteroid that fell from another blade of grass and is now rushing at you at breathtaking speeds. You brace for impact, but instead of feeling a strong punch, you just get sucked in. You try to swim, but the water feels thick and sticky and holds onto your limbs like glue. Air molecules are free spirits, while water molecules act more like social creatures that group together whenever possible. They pull on each other and create a relatively strong cohesive force that- We're going on like a bit of a journey right now, right? But like, where, where is this like leading to? You. you can't help it, but you're still moving, tumbling in all directions, helplessly dragged along by an invisible current. 
Floating in this miniature lake are tens of thousands of microorganisms. Cool. They take on many forms. Viruses the size of tennis balls float around you aimlessly. Others like you. We've been through many, many, many immune like videos. Freight trains. But most look like oily jellyfish the size of a car, sporting long tentacles that act like supercharged propellers. Despite the water holding onto them like glue, some move hundreds of body lengths per second, equivalent to a person shoveling through mud at over <laughs> 600 kilometers an hour. Mud! However, bacteria weigh so little, and water is so viscous that they basically have no inertia. There is no gliding on this scale. The result is a weird jerky motion that's hard to keep track of. Maybe we can learn more about this strange motion if we go even deeper. Huh? The molecule realm. You've become the size of a molecule, just under two nanometers. I thought we was going into space, man. I thought we was going into space. We're, we're just going down into the in, into the cells. This is wide. At your new tiny scale, the droplet now seems as big as the moon to a regular human. The blade of grass it rests on could reach from the tip of Alaska to the end of Australia. Mad. And the park is now almost the size of the solar system. Mad. But instead of mostly empty space, it is filled with stuff. Everywhere you look, there are innumerable amounts of molecules. Bro, this is what I was on about earlier in the video. You know how, like, the scale of humans to the universe, right? So, let, let's say at the size of the molecule, the, this park is now the size of our solar system, right? And let's just say that you don't find any aliens or other living things in this park. But then you put, get the whole entire Earth to this park. Like, this might just be a dead park right here. You get the whole entire earth, there's, there's aliens around, which is, you know, you can't see them just out of your reach, right? Just like the scale of this scale right here. So, like, uh, this, you know, all I'm saying is this is 100% there's fucking aliens, bro. 100% just out of reach. Everywhere you look, there are innumerable amounts of molecules and atoms. The rigid walls of the grass cells beneath you are clearly vibrating, rippling with waves of energy. The water droplet contains nearly a sextillion water molecules that are all in motion. Water is actually a storm of H2O molecules smashing into each other hundreds of trillions of times a second. Each of them is moving at speeds of around 2,300 kilometers an hour and bombard their surroundings mercilessly, sending small objects hurtling in all directions. This is the source of the invisible current that you noticed when you were a thousand times larger. Scaling this speed up to the human scale is impossible, as a human-sized molecule would be 2,000 times faster than what the speed the of light. What the fuck? All this furious motion comes from heat. Heat is a bit abstract at our human scale, where you touch something and get a vague sense of whether it's hot or cold. But down right. here, you really feel what heat is. The motion of molecules, vibrating, twisting and colliding, as if they're inside a furious ball pit. So weird. When these molecules lose heat, they move more slowly and collide less often. When they gain heat, they speed up and smash together with renewed fervor. Temperature is basically the measure of the average speed of these fantastic dancers performing all day. Suddenly, a molecule hits you especially hard, and you're catapulted out of the water droplet into the air again. And here, you see something unexpected. The stuff between the air molecules. Nothing. You know what? This is mad that we know all this, right? Like, oh my god, like being a scientist and like trying to figure all this out and then, make, you know, making it visually is a bit different to how they find out, you know, all of this, but it's actually mad how, like, they, how far and small they've seen. Between the molecules that make up the air, there is a vacuum. On average, a molecule in the air travels for about 60 nanometers, which is about the length of a hockey rink if it were the size of a human. If we were to compress all the molecules and atoms buzzing around in the room you're watching this in, they would only fill about 0.1% of its volume. 99.9% .9 of the space around you is a vacuum. You just don't notice it. Which also means that every time you take a breath, you breathe in mostly nothing with a few atoms. Wow. The subatomic realm. Huh? At your size of under two picometers, scale starts to lose its meaning. A human would be nearly two billion kilometers tall relative to you, so large they could stretch their arms from the sun to Saturn. An atomic nucleus would be the size of a grain of sand you could hold on the tip of your finger. That grain holds 99.97% of the atom's mass. The rest, a sphere of influence about as large as the Eiffel Tower from your perspective, is filled with an electron cloud. 
That's basically all the places where electrons might be at any given moment in time. Electrons are shapeshifters that morph around outside a nucleus. Bro, what what have we even gone into right now? What have we even got into right now? Creating mess of different shapes with every new moment. Unlike the graceful motion of planets, the atomic nuclei are chaotic blurs. They bulge, roll, quiver, and breathe. They hold back the same energy that powers nuclear bombs, and it doesn't let them sit still. They twist and vibrate six trillions of times a second. Holy shit! It's time to end our journey and return to. What are you doing? Stop it! The smallest place. We have reached the bottom, the border between reality and unreality. The scale here is the Planck length, which is the distance light travels in a Planck time. Planck <laughs> time is the time it takes light to travel a Planck length. Hmm. Okay. None of our models of the universe make sense at scales smaller than this. So for now, this is it. We think that down here, particles bubble into existence and then spontaneously disappear. Creating a quantum foam of unimaginable energy. Can we go even smaller? We don't know. It's time to return. It's actually crazy how, like, you know, when you break everything down, when you absolutely break everything down, and most of it is just nothing. Like, like he said, like, ninety-nine point something percent is just nothing. So fucking weird. And we're all just made of this. Like everything. If you look up, the universe is large and strange. So incredibly large and strange. But if you look down into the tiny and extremely tiny, the universe seems even larger and even stranger. Yeah, it really does. In the end, the perfect place might be where you are right now. Not it really big, does. Not too small. How do we know? I think I think we're just in a simulation. It don't make sense. <laughs> it don't make sense how 99 point, uh, point something percent is uh, nothingness. What is this? I'm ready. <gasps> we did it. It worked. Right under our noses, there's so much hidden that we never get to see with our own eyes. Right. Entire realms of bizarre structures and outlandish creatures. What a magical place this is. A forest of slime molds, single-celled organisms that work together and form fungus-like structures. But we don't have time to hang out with these calm fellows any longer. Shh, now we're in the kingdom of the mighty tardigrades. Don't disturb them in their death-like slumber. Don't worry though, they'll wake up once the conditions are less rough. Huh? Oh, didn't mean to get in the way. Your cells are hustling to keep you alive, right. coordinating myriads of proteins. This might be the weirdest place yet, with no up or down. There's way too much going on. Better move on. Now, we're inside one of the parts that allow you to watch this video. The structure of a microchip is so small, it nearly breaks the rules of the quantum realm. Wait, something's happening. These hidden worlds are all part of our 1,023 human era calendar. Oh this shit, that's actually pretty cool. Journey through the micro. I can't lie, that was a really sick ass advert for their calendar. That's that's actually dope, but that's a cool ass calendar as well. I was actually really invested into that video right there. That was actually a really good video. Curse killed it yet again. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you perform, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.